Hello and welcome to Learn TV for our new episode. Today's topic is about executive voice projection, how to sound more convincing as an executive. My name is Drena and I will be your host for this show and via Zoom we're welcoming Mrs. Nicole Smart, who is an internationally experienced corporate trainer for management and leadership development. Welcome Nicole, it's a pleasure to have you in our show. Lena, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you once again to Learon for the invitation to be back. Nicole, let's start off by explaining what executive voice projection is. Executive voice projection is the way in which we utilize our voice. It's the sound of our voice, it's the clarity, it's the volume, it's the tone, it's the intonation, it's the tempo. But the simplest way to to say what is executive voice projection is to utilize this essential communication tool effectively. To quote Forbes magazine, the goal in any communication, especially business, is to control the way other people perceive you when you speak. What do you think? Why is it imperative for leaders or executives to have a voice that people want to listen to? Well, leadership is about influence and persuasion. And when we utilize our voice to essentially sound more mature or to sound more empathetic or to sound more stern or to sound a little bit softer or to deliver a very difficult message in a way that it can be processed or it's easier on the ear or if one's lacking confidence but is able to utilize their voice and to hold their own, let's say one is in a meeting and, you know, the where the leader or individual is is nervous and got all these things going on. However, it sounds as if they are confident, then therefore they will be perceived to be so. And so influence, persuasion, and all of these factors heavily depend on the manner in which we communicate the message. So, of course, words are critically important, but we know the famous saying, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Are there any techniques that leaders or executives can use to improve the sound and the tone of their voice? Indeed. And every time I train and coach the subject, everyone, the, 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 the simplest techniques are the, are the, the most you know, sort of rejected. And like, no, it's so basic and it's so fundamental. And I always say this. Let's start by speaking in front of the mirror. How many of us actually take the time okay, to actually look into the mirror and have a conversation with oneself. And that is a technique that might sound a bit bizarre and a little bit uncomfortable, but that's where it begins because voice projection is also about seeing reactive cues. And so the number one tip that I do recommend is to have a conversation with yourself every single day. I do it all day, which is pretty natural for me. But um, if one can practice in front of the mirror every single day, have a dialogue or a conversation, be it random or a prepared one. Let's say you're going into a meeting and you narrate that what you're going to say over and over again in front of the mirror. You can start to see your visual cues so it helps your presentation skills. And as you're saying it again, you listen to listen. So that's technique number two. Listen to listen to your voice. Now, initially, we might not know what it, what do you mean listen to listen, listen to listen? But as we listen to the sound of our voice, as we listen to the sound of our voice, as we listen to the sound of our voice, as we listen to the sound of our voice, we can start to create a relationship with that sound. And so another technique is to say the same thing, a same sentence over and over and over again in different tones and in a different voice. Should I give you an example, Trina? Yes, you can. Okay, excellent. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our show. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our show. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our show. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our show. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our show. Welcome to our show. Welcome to our show. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our show. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our show. That's an example, a dramatic example, of how one can practice their voice over and over again, saying the same thing, but using a different speed, a different tone, and dramatic effect, and lowering the bass, and hiring, and so on and so forth. And I could go on forever. So it's a little bit uncomfortable, Drena, but it can happen behind closed doors. And that's 
where it begins. And then, of course, to add on to that, we've got this beautiful medium called Zoom, where you can sit in your own private office and, you know, present and narrate. And we've got playback, which is fantastic. And of course, we've got a cell phone. So, you know, just say the same thing over and over again, record yourself, sit back and listen to it and actually listen to your voice and start to connect and see what you like and see what you don't like and what you like, do more of that. And what you don't like, maybe get a second opinion before you make that assumption because you might have a biased perception of self and not utilize the sounds that you don't like. And finally, if, again, we we get deeper into this in our training and coaching programs at Learon, but in conclusion, eventually one can start to feel the voice move. So you, you can actually feel the muscle. You can feel it. And that's ultimately where we want um, people to be. Thank you for the answer, Nicole. Other than tone of the voice, what are the other key areas we should pay attention to when communicating? Well, of course, our facial expressions are critically important when we're communicating. So we need to pay attention, or it is important to pay attention to both our facial cues. Are we communicating on our face the message we want to communicate? And what I mean by that is often we are unaware of what our body language, so both our facial expressions, our frame, our hands, and so on, is communicating. So we might be, for example, very interested in a particular subject that somebody is talking about, but not demonstrating interest on our face. And if we aren't aware of that, then of course that's going to have a knock-on effect on the communication process because the recipient is going to read into those cues and then respond accordingly, on which we're going to be responding to their cues. And so it starts with a sense of self-awareness of facial expressions, body language, of course, and also being mindful to study the facial expressions and body language of the people in which, with which we are communicating. And that's also very important, such as cultural intelligence, for example, knowing which cultures, nationalities, backgrounds, and so on, demonstrate particular body language cues so that we can better communicate with those individuals, but also not misinterpret cues that might be foreign to the manner in which we communicate within our culture. So that's very, very important. And then, of course, there is the importance of words themselves and the actual content. You are well known for being passionate about the topic of conversational intelligence. Can you elaborate on this and share with us the importance of words in the communication process? Absolutely. I'm so passionate about Dr. Judith E. Glazer's version and book of conversational intelligence. And in her own words, if I may, she says that conversational intelligence is the mode through which we learn, grow, evolve, and navigate with others. So essentially, our conversations are a journey that we embark upon to evoke an understanding with one another. Now, in this multinational global world that we're communicating in, with different nationalities, backgrounds, cultures, and so on, the sooner that we can really get to understand what words trigger different cultures on that scale, or at an interpersonal level, really get to understand the people that we're working with and understand how our words and the selection of our words could be triggering or activating a negative response in our team members is so, so critical. And when we can harness this understanding, we can become better and more effective communicators. So it's not only learning what words we should be using, but it's also learning and understanding and assessing as to what words we shouldn't be using. And more critically, conversational intelligence involves how we frame or reframe our sentences. And that's why it ties in with the way, obviously our facial expressions, our body language, and the way in which we frame our sentences. In addition to that, conversational intelligence explores how the relationship between our amygdala, which is our primal reptilian brain, as researchers refer to it as, and our prefrontal cortex, which is our newest, youngest executive brain, and the biochemistry of those conversations and the associated hormones that are activated through words, and in particular, oxytocin, which is now known to enhance trust in relations activated 
by words. So in principle, that is what conversational intelligence is and why it's so, so important for us in our organizations and our teams, because it also means that we can have difficult conversations. That's not really the challenge. Difficult conversations are healthy. It's how we have those conversations. And so getting back to the voice projection, when you marry the two, we can be saying certain things, but utilizing the correct tone to demonstrate one emotion or the other. And therefore, there'll be an improved outcome and a better response between two parties. What kind of training or coaching is available for leaders, executives to enhance their executive voice projection? Well, just that at Leoron, we offer executive presentation etiquette and voice projection, online presentation etiquette, and group and one-on-one -on -one coaching along the same lines. And in addition to that, we also, or I also train with Leoron, emotional and conversational intelligence for leadership management and executive development. Nicole, thank you for your insights. It was a pleasure to have you on our show again. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Drena, and thank you very much to Liron and to all the viewers. All the best. A big thanks to our viewers as well for tuning in. If you want to watch this episode or browse more topics, you can always visit our YouTube and Vimeo channels and watch our recorded sessions. For any suggestions on new topic of discussion, feel free to write to us or leave a comment and we will review it with our content team. Until next time, stay tuned.